Hey everybody! What's going on? It has been a long time, hasn't it? I have not done a gameplay video like this in six months. Um, real life being what it is, and I'll kind of get into it here before I start this particular gameplay video. We are going to be playing Star Fox tonight, going back to 1993. This was the year that I turned 21, and believe it or not, this game right here plays an integral role in my 21st birthday. Uh, thank you all for joining me tonight. I really do appreciate you guys watching. Um, and we're definitely going to play this game. We're going to be playing the easy route. I'm not going to be playing any of the difficult routes because I want to talk more about my memories of the game and what, what life was like in 1993 and a very special competition that was taking place uh, during my birthday, which has a lot to do with this game. First of all, I do want to catch you up on real life stuff. Um, in February of this year, I started working another job. I work from home, uh, which is, you see one of my monitors back here. I actually have two. One of them is off, off camera because there is a screensaver that's on there that I can't show you for work purposes. Uh, but I started working from home in February. Um, it's now June, so it has been uh, four months. Uh, it is a difficult job. I'm working in the healthcare business, um, and I'm learning a lot very quickly and uh, struggling a little bit. So this job takes a lot out of me. So I work 9 to 5.30. When I'm done with my job for the day, um, I am retreating out of the office here. This is where I spend most of my day is in this office now. So when I'm done playing, the last thing I want to be doing, or when I'm done working, the last thing I want to be doing is streaming or looking at another computer screen. What I want to be doing is just kind of getting away for a little bit, resting my eyes. And then I spend some time in my living room where the Switch and I got a 360. I got an Xbox 360 recently too, where I've been playing those. And then by the time nightfall rolls around, I'm either in bed early or I just don't have a lot of energy left. So I've been on hiatus from YouTube for a while. I did try and do some Twitch streaming briefly using the Twitch beta application. And my computer here that I'm using, this laptop that I'm using is not built for streaming. Uh, I have a lot of issues with drop frames and with some other things. So I'm back to using OBS and I'm back to pre-recording stuff. And when I get time and I get the energy, uh, and that's what we're doing tonight. So that's what's been going on. Um, I don't know what's going to be going on for the future here. I'm trying to stick it out with the job because working from home is a big, uh, is a big bonus, especially with the way that the real world is out on the outside. Um, and it's an interesting job for sure. I'm just, uh, I've never struggled with a job this much in my 30 plus years of work doing different kinds of jobs. I've worked different call center jobs before and this kind of thing that I'm doing where I'm working with um, uh, with healthcare providers and answering claims questions and things um, is difficult. It is very difficult and I have been struggling. Um, I have been getting some help though, which is good. And it's helping to leave some of the tension. Um, and this is really the first weekend I've had and I've felt in a long time like I could jump on a gameplay video and kind of do some stuff. So that's what we're going to do tonight. Um, so I picked Star Fox. I'm wearing my Star Fox shirt, playing the Star Fox game. I even have the Star Fox issue of Nintendo Power here. As you can see, when you're looking at this gameplay video, if you were around back in 1993, seeing graphics like this on a video game console was mind-blowing. Even though if you look at it now, with the very harsh polygon look, the lack of detail for some of the enemies, there's more flashing light than there is detail. Um, but you still see some scaling, you see some rotation. It was really impressive for the time, and we were blown away by it. These days, you look at it and you're kind of like, this look good? When we start to play the game and you see issues with frame rate and performance, you'll even question it further. Like, how could you possibly think that this was cool back then? But believe me when I tell you, we certainly did think that it was cool. So when you get into the game a little bit, 
I like this startup because the first thing this does is it lets you kind of mess around with the different gameplay options. I'm hitting my trigger buttons here to barrel roll. I'm using uh, an 8-bit Do controller here, my Super Nintendo controller that I had been using for a long time, finally uh, bit the big one. So uh, I'm using this now. So yeah, dude, you have different play control options. I gotta say that three times fast. Play control options, play control options, play control options. I am always pick A, because that's what I've always used. And when I hit the start button, it takes you to a mode selection. Training just walks you through how to play the game. I'm not going to do that right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start to play the game here in just a moment. What I want to draw your attention to is this game came out, I believe it was March of 1993. The following month, in April of 1993, Nintendo was advertising this big competition that was going to take place at malls and at big box stores all across the country, where you would play a special version of Star Fox that had the first two levels of the game and then a special bonus stage, and the players who got the highest scores would win some pretty cool prizes. They had to get the highest score at each location. So what I wound up doing is I took both days off from work that the competition was taking place in, and I did a whirlwind tour, and I'll talk a little bit about how that worked as I get into gameplay here. But that's how I spent my 21st birthday, 1993, April 22nd, 1993 was birthday number 21 for me. I did not go to a bar, I did not have my first drink, I didn't have a big party. What I did was I took myself and my then girlfriend's brother, and we drove to different locations and we competed in this competition. We logged our scores for this competition. All right, let's get into this. If you haven't played the original Star Fox before, first of all, what are you waiting for? Uh, if you have a Switch, get Nintendo Switch Online. It's $20 for a year. You have access to this, Star Fox 2, and a bunch of other Nintendo and Super Nintendo games that are already there. Uh, whether you do it past a year or not is completely up to you, but if you're jonesing for some Star Fox action, uh, this is the best way to do it, is playing on Switch. I'm not playing it on my Switch, though, uh, but I do have it in my living room area. The middle path, which is the one we're gonna take, is the easiest path. This path down here is the second, like the middle, or like the medium difficulty, and I think this one up here is the hard difficulty, but we're gonna play it right in the middle. This is corn area here, and we get General Pepper for the first time. Star Fox Team! Our last resort is to counterattack Venom. Good luck. And now you hear General Pepper. Good luck. And now you get one of the coolest intros for 1993 in a video game. Yes, it's wireframe, but you can see the R wings. We have some cool looking cinematography as the camera swings around. You hear the voice kind of calling out for the fighters to get ready to launch. You switch us to the outside as the fighters do launch, and then we get another camera swing, and boom, we are on the way. So let's start playing. Now, I always like to play Star Fox like I played the, Star, the Super Star Fox Weekend Competition. And by that, the way that you score is you have to shoot down as many enemies and fly through as many of these gates as possible. The more that you hit and the fewer that you miss, the higher a percentage you get at the end of the stage. You want to go for 100% in order to get maximum score. This means using your bombs pretty liberally. You may hear me tapping my button. I apologize for that. I have been spending a lot of time today trying to get my microphone working the way that I want it to. I need some changes. I'm hoping that it kind of dulls the button pressing, but I can't be sure that it's going to. Oh, that is the wrong side, but I'm getting another bomb back, I think. This is where it is. If you've played this game for long enough... Oh, maybe not. Where is it? I know there's an extra bomb here somewhere, and I'm trying to remember... Here it is. I'm hoping I didn't miss it. I might have. Nope, it's over here. This red building over here, if you fly to the right, get an extra bomb. There it is. Definitely gonna want that. I'm 
again, you're just trying to shoot down as much stuff as you can. Look out. This game, I still get into this as much now as I did almost 30 years ago. It's weird to say, and I know it's very strange, but it's not that exciting. It's not that hard. But for me, all the memories come rushing back of when I was first playing the game and when I was getting ready for the big competition. Uh, and I took it seriously, man. I was putting in like one to two hours of practice a day leading up to the contest, just you know, trying to figure out where everything was and the best scoring options. I took it so seriously, like I was going to be getting money out of it or something, which was not the case. Right, that's good. Now, the competition was timed, so you really didn't have a lot of... You really didn't want to waste time. So you had to use a bomb there in order to finish things up pretty quickly. And lo and behold, stage one is done. And then you have to wait for the evaluation at the end of the stage. You get a percentage from zero to 100% based on how many ships you shot down and how many gates you went through. I'm holding my breath here because I think I might have screwed up. I did not. I got 10,000. I got a perfect score. So there we go. The Super Star Fox Weekend Competition Cartridge, which is its own unique cartridge. If you look at the Super Star Fox Weekend Competition Cartridge on price charting, you're going to see a price that's going to make your eyeballs fall out of your head. It's not quite what, like, Nintendo World Championships would be worth, uh, but it is still worth a pretty penny. Um, and that's unfortunate, because it is a cool way to play the game. It is tier score attack, and you only have a certain amount of time in order to play. I believe it was three minutes, but I don't remember exactly could have been five minutes i'd have to look it up to be sure so you only played corneria the asteroid belt which you're going to play next and then a bonus stage and the highest score at each location would win a star fox flight jacket and you would also be entered into a drawing to win some extra prizes i won a super star star fox weekend flight jacket and i wore it into the ground it literally disintegrated in 2004, so that was, see, I won it in 1993, so it was like 11 years. I wore this jacket without fail. The sleeves were starting to fall apart and come unthreaded, and then one day, like, like an arm just came off, <laughs> and I couldn't wear it anymore. Now, had I known back then that the jacket would be this big collector's item, and I shouldn't wear it because it was money or whatever... Maybe I wouldn't have worn it, but to me, wearing that jacket was a badge of honor. It was a really cool thing. I wore it everywhere, without exception. I wore it to bars when I used to go to karaoke. I wore it to dinners. I wore it everywhere. Um, girlfriends at the time, and even my ex-wife at the time, or my wife, now ex-wife, um, kind of felt weird with me wearing the jacket, but I didn't care. Uh, to me, it was a pretty big deal. To own. So let's go to the asteroid field now. Andros's forces intend to build a base in this area. Destroy their rock crusher. Good luck. <laughs> now we zoom to first person. And this, I thought, was a really cool idea, although it controls differently. Because it's like a flight sim, so it, everything is reversed. So if you're not used to that reverse play control, it's going to weird you out. Me, because I like games like Ace Combat and things, it works just fine. Where are you? Uh oh. Yeah, you're welcome. You're gonna hear me starting to talk a lot about characters like. Slippy and Peppy that I rescue them and then they fly in the way of my shots because they're dumb. Um, so I will tell them to get out of the way. Playing a game on stream, this is how I talk when I'm playing on my own. 
um, when I'm, I talk to my TV pretty liberally. So this is no different. As strange as that is, it's the truth. I, did I miss that bomb? I sure did. That is super unfortunate. Get out of the way. Now there is a secret area in here. I'm not gonna go there because the game kinda sticks you there and you can't get away. But there is a secret area in here that you can get to. And I found out about that through reading Nintendo Power. I thought it was a really cool secret too. Always having to bail these guys out. Get good. Cure yourself. Still can't believe I missed that. That extra blaster. That was so dumb. That's not good. And what sucks about this is I don't have a bomb, so I'm gonna have I'm gonna be stuck here a little bit longer. Darn it, that's all right. So you have to get rid of all these targets, or all eight targets, then the top flies off, and then it's just shooting the center. Not very difficult. There you go. My watch is telling me to stand up. I am not standing up. I don't think I got 100% here, which is unfortunate. But knowing what I know about later in the game, I've never 100%, I've never 100%ed the entire game. Once you get to Venom, the very last area of the game, that's where I tend to struggle. So, if I don't get 100% here, I'm not going to be confused. I got it anyway. Okay. So, this would be where the Super Star Fox weekend competition cart would end, and then you'd go to a bonus stage and try and get extra score. But here in this game, we move to the Space Armada stage, which is pretty neat, but also is really taxing for the game. You'll see some performance issues here that stand out more than in other areas. So we'll just get right there. The Space Armada consists of powerful battleships. Destroy their energy cores. Good luck. You got it. Let's go. So back into space, and back into first person view. I think this was done on purpose because of possible performance problems. It makes sense. Oh good, I need that. This is another stage that I tend to struggle with in terms of percentages. I very rarely get 100% here. If I do, I'm gonna chalk it up to... I'm dead! That's not great! I flew too close to the ship. That's... that's not good. That's me trying to go for 100% and making a bad judgment call. Whoops. Okay, we'll get the extra blaster back, which is good. Wait, that wasn't smart, like in the slightest, of what I was thinking. I might be able to get... No, nope. uh, that's not great. I do get bombs back though, which is good. So you can sh shoot down or shoot at the bridges of these, almost like a Star Destroyer. It's obvious here what they're going for, by the way, right? I mean, this is obviously trying to be a Star Wars type setup. That's not great. That's okay. So now we go back to third person. That's a shield right there, I think. Oops. 
that's the core, believe it or not. We fly out. And then back into space we go. Nobody knows what he's saying there. At this point, I'm not going to worry about the 100% because I need to not make any more mistakes. I'm still perturbed that I messed up the... I messed up and hit the ship. That's so bad. I think I'd never played this before. Yo! Up, down, up, down, slow down. And you can see some of the performance issues there, like there was some slowdown. Good, we're good. Gotta open up that gate. Gotta shoot down the core. There we go. I don't know why my shield just went away. I didn't think it was temporary. Whatever. Yo, don't know. Doing that. That's okay. Light the gate. Alright. Another reason I'm not happy with myself for losing a ship there is you really need to have all the extra lives you can because once you get to Venom, the last stage of the game, it gets hard. It gets very difficult. So having all the ships you need, uh, all the ships you can have, I should say, is pretty important. Play control here is a little floaty, which again makes sense because it's Light game. Okay. I also tend to struggle here on this boss. And you'll see why. First, we gotta fly through this little hallway. how he navigates all those tight turns, but I guess that's what makes Fox one of the best pilots in the galaxy. This is just nifty, just in and of itself, I think. Now there should be... Okay. Now I can just go right for the floor. Here we go. Cool. Now the core collapses in on itself. Locks us a couple of the loops to get out of the ship. Here it comes. And as usual, that nick of time escape for Fox in the Cloud. Note the slowdown, but it is what it is. We really didn't care that much about slowdown back then. And it's on Super Nintendo, which is kind of infamous for its issues of slowdown. 84%, that's not great. Part of that is me losing a ship, which I can't even explain it. On the meteor we go. Be sure to use your retros if you're going too fast. Be careful with my R-wings. This is where I have a little bit of an issue with the game, because I always thought, and especially when we get to Star Fox 64, I thought that Star Fox team was, like, almost mercenaries. I didn't think that the R-Wings belonged to General Pepper, but I guess in this game they did. I'm not up to my... or I'm not up on my Star Fox lore. I guess I have to check that out. And you'll see before long here that General Pepper is dead on when he's talking about speed. This is much faster 
than any of the stages before it. Like, you're cooking along at a good speed. At this point, because I had such a bad third stage, I'm not trying to 100% the game anymore. At this point, I'm just trying to survive just so I can play all the way through. I wish I'd gone the other way. Whoa, look out. The sense of scale with those walkers is just... It makes you feel so small because they're so large. It's neat. And the game really does convey that sense of scale that you really didn't see much in shooters at the time. He's certainly not on console. I mean, this felt like a big adventure. And to me, it still does feel that way. Alright, I got another bomb. Let's go. Look out. Oh, I helped you? Okay. Yo! Right, I need help. So I'm gonna lose another ship here. That's okay. Will you stop complaining that I shot down a ship that you wanted to shoot down? I'm a team, dude. Stop it. Ah. Which one is it? I think it's this one I want. No, oh, ah, I should have gone the other way. Don't worry, I'll save you. Because I wanted to. Not that I needed to, but because I wanted to. Yeah, well, don't fly in the way. See, this is what I was talking about. Like, you help them, and all they do is fly into your line of fire for no reason. Alright, this is the boss character. So there are two parts to this. Once the legs fly out from underneath, then you kind of have to get out of the way. Then he's going to drop his legs again, or it's going to drop its legs again. I am E thrown out. I don't have And then once the legs come up again, I can get there. Now see how they turn red? Now I can shoot the legs off. Look out. Oh boy. That's not good. That fire thing, if you get hit by that stream of fire, that that's that's the end. I'm not even hanging around to see what happens there. I'm just trying to finish this guy off. Without losing a life. Here we go. Excellent day. Four stages done. Now we make our approach to Venom. I don't even know how I did here. I don't care. So upset about the 84%. You don't even know. Totally out of practice. Oh, yay, I got 100% there. I got an extra credit, though. I got continues, but I don't care about continues. So, Venom is two parts. The first part is the approach to Venom, and then the second part is making uh, or dealing with Venom's surface. So we're going to approach Venom here. We're going to go back in this, the cockpit in a second. Andros is hiding on Venom. Fox, you must find his core brain and destroy it. Good luck. And this is where the tension starts to go up, because if this game was playing around before in terms of difficulty, it, it's not playing around now. This is faster, the enemies are more aggressive, your partners are in trouble more often, and there's not as much opportunity, for, like, there's not as much room for error here. And like I said, once you get here, 
this late in the game, you cannot afford to be losing lives because once you get the Venom's surface, <laughs> it's game on for sure. And you'll see why if I can get there. I'm pretty sure I can. Oh, look at that. Flying alien. That's neat. I don't see that all the time. Out of the way, and I won't shoot you, dude. It's not a difficult concept, man. Hey, hey, hey. Oof. You guys give me a hard time. Where are you, Slip? There we go. Oh, he even got shot once. Oops. Oh, wait a minute. What is that? I got none of that. That's... Look, we're not good. Alright. And now I have to start all the way back to the beginning. Man, I am so out of practice. Not good, guys. Not good. Not good, not good. Oh, I didn't even get an extra blaster. Oh, boy. Look at this. Just this constant barrage. I'm dead again. Look, look at all the missiles. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, no lives left. No time to screw around. Yeah, I guess the dual blaster doesn't show up again when you get it the first time. That's not great. I missed energy. That's not great. Where is he? Nope, I am in trouble, 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 trouble. way I need an energy recharge and I don't think I'm gonna get it. I get that one. I cannot believe I did that. That hurts. That hurts so much. And that's like a checkpoint. Not that it matters, because I have no lives left. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, boy. 
down to the planet surface. I have one bomb. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I don't even know why he gave me the 100% there. That's terrible. Neat little camera trick. As it swoops down and man, oh, this sucks. Yo! There you go, Slippy. Standard did it for you. I do that? That is insane. I don't know how I did that. I suppose I shouldn't say anything. Like, just take it. Instead of asking how or why. Get out of the way. Shoot you down myself. to make mistakes in here. You can see the slowdown. Uh. Okay, I can do this, though. This is the hardest boss in the game. Not the not the end boss. No, this guy. This guy right here is the hardest boss in the game. You don't think so until you actually play it. This is the hardest boss in the game. And the reason is these missiles that he shoots. Like if you don't hit these... Now I gotta get out of the way. Jump back up. And of course, I can't hit any of the missile shots that I need to hit. I did it. Oh, but I'm so in trouble because I have no shield left. Oh, man. Into the core we go. This is the final showdown, if I can get there. Again, keeping in mind that I have no lives. My shield is down. That helps. Oh man, I 
am so, <laughs> I have half shield left. And this is it. This is Andros right here. This is the last guy. The last boss of the game. did that. This was a sloppy playthrough. I was down to my last life. My shields are almost gone. And I managed. I, I don't even know how. As I shoot through the core. And there it is. The victorious formation of Fox Team as we fly out into space of Venom. It's an impressive cinematography for the time. That just about ends Star Fox, though not just yet. Get this cool little camera swooping flyby thing. And you get to see your scores for each stage. 100% on stage 1, 100% on stage 2, I don't even want to talk about stage 3. 100% on stage 4, I think they gave me 100% on stage 5. Stage 6 is always the curious one. 90%. So 400, 490, 57,400? 57, yep. 95%. Not the best, not the worst. Still an A, if I was still teaching and grading. Come in, Cornelia. This is Cornelia, Pepper speaking. Congratulations on a job well done. Roger, I'm heading back to Cornelia. Just that right there, if you hear the clarity of speech, especially in Fox's voice, we didn't hear it much because it's cartridge medium and couldn't afford to have that kind of memory dedicated just to voice. They were able to do that for Star Fox 64, but not for this. Um, it was impressive. Also impressive here is walking through the bosses one more time. You can see that when they shrink the bosses down just a little bit in scale, they tend to animate a little bit better. Even with the extra uh, laser fire and things. This is Rock Crusher. This was from the Space Armada stage. I thought for sure I was going to have trouble with this one, but I didn't, which is nice. That's the atomic base. 600 by 850 by 1200. I don't know how many units that is. Is that meters? I'm not sure. This guy from stage 4, from Meteor. Gensing and Sector. That Fire Blaster is the big deal. But I was able to avoid that, which was great. And this guy here, like this dual threat boss, Antron. Like I said, hardest boss in the game. Andros is not hard, as you saw. I didn't struggle with Andros even though I had half a shield left. This part here, that's hard. That is very difficult. And then we see Andros here in the final area. Kind of like Spaceballs. If you get that reference, if you saw Spaceballs, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to mention it on camera because this, uh, this is a family show. And then roll credits. We have that Superman the motion picture credit roll where you have the zooming text. 
Hiroshi Yamauchi, who was the president of Nintendo at the time. He was the executive producer. Your producer here is Shigeru Miyamoto. Shiggy, do this thing. Director is Katsuya Aguchi. I don't know if he did anything else. I didn't really look him up. Assistant director, Yoichi Yamada. Dylan Cuthbert, who went on to Q Games, he also played a vital role in Star Fox 64 3D, or the 3DS. Very talented individual. And we get some more credits here. The Argonaut Software, if you don't know the story, um, really responsible for the, the, uh, the FX chip, and they did a lot of programming uh, for Star Fox, and they helped Nintendo out a bit. some more credits here. You might see one more familiar name, I think right here. Koji Kondo doing the sound effects, but didn't do the music here, which is pretty interesting because Koji was more uh, more well-known for music, but uh, Jimei Hirasawa doing the music composing for this particular game. Here's the Argonaut software shout-out for the FX chip and doing what they did so well. Jason and Ben Cheese, Patrick Lucas, Satoshi Nishimi, Ronobu Kakui. Takes a village, right? Takes a fair number of people to be able to get a game like this off the ground. So that is a look at Star Fox going all the way back to 1993. Um, it is still a very special game to me. I enjoy playing it every once in a while. It's a game that I come back to, much like Super Castlevania 4. Um, I don't get tired of playing it all the way through. Obviously, this takes a lot less time than Super Castlevania 4 does to be able to play all the way through. But nonetheless, I really do enjoy it. And believe it or not, next year makes 30 years since Star Fox came out here in the U.S. Um, so I'm sure I'm going to wind up visiting it one more time for that particular anniversary. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay video. It was a lot of fun doing it. I hope that you stayed along for the ride to watch me through the ups and downs. Um, I definitely need to play this a little bit more to kind of uh, uh, fine tune my skills. In terms of when I'm going to do another gameplay video, I don't know. Um, I'd like to do more. It just really depends on my energy and what's been going on with work and if I can kind of get myself to a good place. But Right now, I had the time on this particular weekend. It's Saturday night. It's just before Father's Day. Uh, so I figured I would get a video in and kind of upload something to the channel. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it. I will try and do another one again soon. Until that next time, please take care of yourselves and each other. See ya.